Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about how much protein you should be eating based on your fitness goals and body size. Um, so to begin with, this is the minimum recommendation. So meaning that everyone, all adults, I should say, should be meeting these guidelines at a very bare minimum. And then on the next slide, I will talk about uh, reasons that we might need more protein than this and how much protein you need. Uh, so at a minimum, we should be aiming for 10 to 35% of our calories to come from protein. Uh, so what that means is if you're eating a 2000 calorie diet, 10 to 35% of those calories, that would be 200 to 700 calories should be from protein. So if we divide those numbers by four, because we get four calories per gram of protein. So if we divide 200 by four and 700 by four, we get 50 to 175 grams of protein per day. Um, so that's based on a 2000 calorie diet, depends on how many calories that you are consuming, but you can do that exact same math based on uh, whatever your total for the day is. Um, now, the minimum amount of protein for an average sedentary adult is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Um, so if you weigh yourself in pounds, then first you need to uh, do the calculation and transfer your weight in pounds into kilograms, then multiply your weight in kilograms by 0.8 to get the bare minimum amount of protein that you need to maintain your body. Um, so for example, someone who weighs 175 pounds, that is equivalent to about 79 kilograms. So times 0.8 means that they need a minimum of 63 grams of protein per day. Okay, now most of us are going to need more protein than that bare minimum. So at about the age of 40 and beyond, um, your protein intake is going to need to increase uh, just to prevent sarcopenia, so to prevent loss of muscle mass. Um, so by around age 40, somebody who is sedentary, so they're not exercising, not especially active, um, their protein intake should increase a little bit uh, to 1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if we use that same example of someone who's 175 pounds, that person is 79 kilograms, that means that they'll need about 79 to 95 grams of protein a day just to maintain their bodies. Um, and again, that is without exercise or any goals like building muscle mass or anything like that. Um, for an average adult who does exercise regularly and I mean, I mean moderate intensity, moderate volume, so nothing in the extreme, um, that person should aim for 1.1 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. Uh, so for our example person who's 175 pounds, uh, that would be about 87 to 119 grams of protein per day. Uh, someone who uh, weight lifts, so somebody who's doing resistance training and or their volume or intensity of training is higher than kind of an average moderate exerciser, uh, their protein requirement will be a little bit higher. So 1.2 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So for our example, 175 pound person, that is 95 to 135 grams of protein a day. Um, so excessive protein is generally considered to be more than two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Um, so for our 175 pound person, that would mean 158 grams of protein or more per day would be considered excessive. Um, now, I'm sure as with anything, we could come up with exceptions to that rule. So maybe somebody who does actually require that much protein. Uh, but for most people, even pretty heavy exercisers, like we discussed on the previous slide, um, that two grams of protein per uh, kilogram of body weight does become excessive. Uh, so what happens when we eat more protein than we need? Um, it's nothing dire, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to be especially harmed by eating too much protein unless it's really, really extreme. Um, in really extreme cases of protein intake, it can be hard for the kidneys to cope with that. Um, but for most of us, it's less dramatic than that. It's just that it might interfere with our blood sugar management or ability to lose weight. Um, so there's a term gluconeogenesis, meaning glucose 
neo, like new, genesis, creation of. Uh, so gluconeogenesis is the formation of glucose from other substances. So we do that with protein. So when we're eating protein throughout the day and we meet our need, so we have all the protein that we need to build muscle or whatever it is that we're doing, um, when we consume all the protein that we need and there's excess beyond that, we go through gluconeogenesis. So our body will convert those amino acids, the building blocks of protein into glucose. So that will increase blood sugar. And when we have that increase in glucose in the blood, um, if there's need for it, the cells will take that glucose up in response to insulin. Um, so the cells in the body will be fed. If we have more glucose than we need beyond that, then we store that glucose as glycogen. So our stored form of glucose that we'll use later. And then if we have more glucose than we need for glucose, readily available glucose and glycogen, then we convert that excess glucose into fatty acids. So those fatty acids might be used for various purposes, but mostly they're converted to fatty acids so that they can be stored in our fat tissue. So essentially, we want to make sure that we have enough protein to fuel the body and to fuel the exercise that we're going through, and especially if we're trying to build more muscle tissue. So we need enough protein, but when our protein intake becomes what we consider excessive, so we have more protein than what the body actually needs, then that is going to affect our blood sugar management. And then that also could contribute to increase in fat stores. Um, so for the most part, we don't need to be overly concerned with gluconeogenesis in the sense that it's okay for some protein to be converted into glucose. But when we do care about that, it would be someone who's on maybe a keto diet. So you're trying to keep blood glucose low. Uh, to encourage ketosis. So too much protein in that situation can knock you out of ketosis because you'll start to convert protein into glucose and use glucose as your fuel source instead of ketones. Um, and then it also would matter to somebody with diabetes mellitus who is concerned with blood sugar management and um, somebody who is carefully regulating their blood sugar needs to be aware that excess protein can be converted into blood sugar and will have an effect in that way. Um, but for most other individuals, it won't make a big difference until it becomes excessive enough that it's converted into fat tissue, because then that's really working against what most of us are trying to accomplish. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.